Got another exam question here on the transition elements topic, so this is a second one in the series. The link to the question is in the description, so if you want to just click on that, have a go at the question, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so part A, we've got to give the electron configurations of cobalt as the element and in the plus 3 oxidation state. So we're picking up at 3s, so it's 3s2, 3p6. I'm going to leave some space and write 4s here, so 4s2, 3d7. Now, if you remember from the first video, they can be in either order. So you could have put 4s2, then 3d7, or the way I've done it. Now, the reason I write it this way is because when you form an ion of a transition element, you take the 4s electrons out first, so it's a bit easier to sort of work your way back in. So we need to lose three electrons, so they will go, and that will go down to 3d6. Part B, one property of cobalt 2 and cobalt 3, other than their ability to form complex ions, which is typical of ions of a transition element, we can't use variable oxidation state, because obviously that's referenced in the question. So you can either go for, they form coloured compounds or coloured ions, and you could have said they can act as catalysts. Part C, so it's a definition essentially, state the meaning of the term ligand. So that's a species which bonds to a central metal ion by donating a pair of electrons, or you could say by forming a coordinate bond. Not a part D now. You'll notice it's asking us about cobalt to sulfate. Now, cobalt uh, transition metal chemistry is not actually specified in the syllabus, so we're going to have to apply our knowledge to this. So, if you think about something like copper to sulfate, what happens when it reacts with um, aqueous sodium hydroxide? Well, you just get the hydroxide precipitate. Obviously, the reaction type is precipitation. So in the case of cobalt, you're going to get cobalt 2 hydroxide. So there's the simple formula you could give, or you could give the slightly more complicated formula. And there's the type of reaction. So the next part, if we just apply what we know about aqueous copper 2 sulfate, for example. So when that's reacted with concentrated hydrochloric acid, we get a ligand substitution reaction where all six of the water ligands, remember it's surrounded by water molecules because it's aqueous, all six of those are substituted for four chloride ligands. So that's going to give this complex ion COCl4 in square brackets 2 minus, and reaction type is ligand substitution. So moving on to part C, we've got to suggest the structures for the four complexes, A through to D. You'll notice I've highlighted these parts of the complexes because that's actually what's going to appear in the, the diagrams. So complex A, notice as well I've already drawn them in, so I just want to explain them. So complex A, we've got six ammonia ligands, so it's got to look like that. Just be careful, you connect the nitrogen to the cobalt. Just be extra careful when you do this side, so it's got to be drawn that way. Moving on to B, that's got one chloride ligand and five ammonias, so just something like that would be fine. You can put the chlorine anywhere you want, by the way, so long as you've just got one of them. And then if we go to C and D, you'll notice they've got the same formula. So four ammonias, two chlorides. So what they're after here is your cis and trans versions. So I've drawn the trans version here. So the chlorides are 180 degrees apart in this one. You could have done them that way, or you could have done them that way. And for D, you need the two chloride ligands 90 degrees apart. So I've put them there and there. You could have had them there and there, there and there, and so on. And these can be either way around as well. So you don't have to put the trans on the left and the cis on the right. So we've got this calculation to finish. So I've just copied the table again, just to save me going back onto the previous page. Quickly explain this um, color coding. So for any of these complexes, We've got two parts of the complex. We've got a positive part, so I've highlighted that in yellow, and we've got a pink part, which is the chloride ions. So if it's got a, whatever the charge is, so N plus, you'd have N moles of Cl minus. So we're told that um, 0 0.01 moles of one of the complexes is reacted with um, an excessive silver nitrate solution, and 2.868 grams of a precipitate is formed. So what's happening is the silver ions from the silver nitrate solution are reacting with the chloride ions that the complex has released 
and forming silver chloride. So the first thing we can do is work out, well, how many moles of silver chloride have formed. So there's just a reminder of the ionic equation for the formation of the silver chloride precipitate. So the moles of silver chloride is going to be mass over MR, 0.02 moles, so 0.02 moles of that. There must have been 0.02 moles of chloride ions present. So you can see if there was only 0.01 moles of complex, that's put twice as many moles into the solution. So it was B because that's got those two chloride ions to react with the silver ions.